Today we are going to be starting a brand new series. If you continually find yourself overwhelmed, highly emotional, exhausted from feeling overstimulated, then I think you're going to love this series. Hi, I'm Melissa from Yoga with Melissa. If you are new here, welcome. We are embarking on a multi-week series for the highly sensitive person. It's been about two years since I've done a series, a multi-week series. The last one was Yoga for Emotions. You can click up here for that. If um, if you are a highly sensitive person, which that actually makes up about 20% of our population are highly sensitive people, not just uh, humans, but it also shows up in the animal kingdom, in the insect kingdom, and the fish, fish also as well. <laughs> there, so uh, this and this is a real thing, right? This has been researched by clinical. Uh, psychology and also uh, we're going to get into that but it, it shows up in our genes we're actually born uh, highly sensitive so this is uh, a real thing it's not just some new age concept I just want to get that clear right from the beginning I think I feel like the uh, it has been a long time since we've done a series uh, we kind of took a, a, a a break from them while we got settled with yin yoga, restorative yoga, yin yang yoga, and and the um, yoga nidra. But uh, I've been really feeling this intuitive call to go back to the series, and I feel like the styles of the yoga that we're doing now work really well for the highly sensitive person. Another series that uh, was a real pinnacle for the channel was the inner critic series, which I'll link to up here as well. The Inner Critic series we did four years ago now, I can't believe that, it started in Tofino, we started filming it, and um, that one, as I said, is a pinnacle series for the channel, I think it's a calling card for the channel, many of you go back and do it at least once a year, and I feel like this is going to be very similar, so if you're new here, be sure to subscribe, press that little bell so you make sure you get all these classes and you can follow it through. We're going to be going through progressively, so it, it, the knowledge builds cumulatively throughout the whole series. Um, what else did I want to say here? This uh, series is based on the research of clinical and research psychologist Elaine Aaron, PhD, and I'll link to her website up here. You can go check that out because she also has a test that you can do to see if you are a highly sensitive person. I did the test and I was shocked that I qualified for every single thing except for two. <laughs> I scored like super high on it and I was like oh well I'm sensitive I don't think I'm that sensitive oh, okay <laughs> actually oh uh, yes you are really highly sensitive <laughs> so today we're gonna we're, we're breaking it down into small pieces because one of the things about the highly sensitive person is that they like try to take it all well they don't try to this is just how they process their world they take it all in all at once so part of the way that I'm going to teach this is to break it down into smaller beds <laughs> so that you're not taking it all in all at once and that way you get less overwhelmed and you get less exhausted from it and today's class is going to um, deal with the the way that highly sensitive people take it all in at once and how that causes them the exhaustion and the overwhelm that's part of it and each week we're going to deal with another piece of it Okay, so now that we've laid the groundwork for this whole series for the highly sensitive person and we're in beautiful um, Chinese cemetery here in Victoria, BC, we're going to lie down and center ourselves before we begin this yin yoga class. You're going to need a bolster, maybe some blocks. Uh, it's nice to have a mat with a, a blanket on top of it for extra padding, especially if you're inside and not on soft grass like me. Good idea to place the bolster underneath your knees so that you have a nice flow of energy so the chi can flow flow uh, so the chi can flow smoothly here.
Okay, so feel the support of the earth underneath you. Let all the tension from your body drain down into the earth. Let your breath sink down into your lower belly where there's space away from thought. So the good news is that taking time away from external stimulus, like this with a yin yoga class where things move really slowly, there's not a lot of external stimulus, is incredibly beneficial for highly sensitive people. And it really helps to downregulate you and, and reset, reset your nervous system. So as I said, highly sensitive people process everything more, whether they are aware of it or not. So this downtime that you're taking right now in a nourishing yoga class like yin yoga, where things move really slowly, there's not a lot of poses, this will really help your nervous system to recover. Okay, so very slowly, you're going to stretch out. And we're gonna come into our first yin posture, which is going to be wide knee child's pose. Oh my God, you should look at the sky right now. See, this is, <laughs> this is a very good example of the highly sensitive person's experience. You're just gonna, I'm gonna take everything in here. And that's part of the beauty of the highly sensitive person's experience, too. I'm going to, it's appreciating the beauty in the world, too. So, before I go on to child's pose.
Okay, so your knees are wide and the first thing is to choose an appropriate edge. So you just want to feel sensation along the inside of your legs. We want to hit all those lower body meridians and you can use a bolster if you want or you don't have to if you don't want to. But a, a big part of tuning into your uh, high sensitivity is choosing that appropriate edge, not going for a super hard edge. Okay, then once you've found that appropriate edge, you're going to soften. And be still so that the so that you can get into the deeper tissues, the deeper connective tissues, so that the chi can run through the meridians. And we stay for a while. We'll be in this pose for five minutes. Most of our poses today will be five minutes. So highly sensitive people process information more deeply and they process information more. So they have to think through all of their options very carefully. And uh, the best example I've heard of this was on, there's a TED talk on highly sensitive people and it's a good one. You can look it up and, and watch it. The woman gives an example of the Chinese food menu. So a highly sensitive person will read through the entire menu and probably order their favorite dish anyway. But they have to make sure they just check through all their options anyway. And, and I can relate a lot to that one. Choosing something at a restaurant always seems like a major decision. Like I want to make sure I get the right one. Even though I usually end up ordering the same thing every time because I know it's going to be what I like and what's going to be good for my digestion and all of that as well. So. But another way of thinking about it is that just in the way that we go through our day, for example, um, when I was, when I do my research, I take notes, I take copious notes and I'll take them again and again. And that's just how I process things. I have to repeat things a number of times for it to be able to stick in my brain. Okay, from here we're going to line our backs and just feel the flow of chi through our bodies.
Then we're going to lie on our stomachs. And you're going to come into Sphinx Pose. If Sphinx Pose doesn't work for your neck and shoulders, you can do legs up the wall. So in today's class, from a traditional Chinese medicine perspective, we're going to focus on the spleen meridian. The spleen meridian starts at the tip of the big toe, runs along the inside of your foot, and then along the inner front of your legs, so front of your legs, but sort of on more on the inside of it, and then up the front of your body to along the ins along the, uh, the groin, the stomach, through the diaphragm, and it connects with the stomach and the heart meridian as well. So stimulating the spleen meridian line, I feel is really helpful for people with, um, who are highly sensitive because it has to, this, the spleen meridian when it's quote out of balance is, uh, tends to focus on or dwell heavily on one topic or it has to do with overthinking which can lead to fatigue and this is basically the highly sensitive person's experience processing everything so deeply that it leads to fatigue so stimulating this line will give the a highly sensitive person more energy, the spleen organ meridian system more energy for this high level of processing, this more processing that happens for the highly sensitive person. Just got about a minute left in this pose. Let your shoulder blades really slide down your back. Relax your shoulders here. Breathe into your low back. Relax your buttocks.
Okay, slowly lower down and just let your back relax, your shoulders relax. Feel the rebound. Particularly in your low back. That one works for your spleen meridian, but also for your uh, kidneys, which gives you the energy that you're going to need for your practice today. Okay, then we're going to come up and do some dragon pose. So for this one, you're going to probably use your blocks or a chair. You might want some extra support here. And you're going to walk your left leg through. And just remember that you're going to be in this pose for a while. So you want to choose an edge that's probably just quite gentle. Okay, so I'm just going to actually lift my blocks a little higher. That feels like it's going to be a little bit more comfortable in my body to stay in this pose for a little while. And just lean forward. You just want to feel the sensation along the front of your leg here. Maybe even up along the front of your body. So they've done a lot of clinical research with highly sensitive people with people <laughs> to determine who's highly sensitive and when they put people in MRI machines and they ask them to do something for example in one experiment they asked uh, highly sensitive people to look at pictures of people that were slightly different and the highly sensitive people brains lit up in areas of deeper processing and more elaborate processing. So the MRI showed that deeper processing and more elaborate processing was being activated in the highly sensitive person's brain. Okay, then we're going to slowly sit back and we'll just come into kneeling uh, for our counter pose here, just to pause here before we do the other side. Okay, so just also to mention, if this isn't working for your knees, the lunge pose, you can always do half happy baby on your back 
and knees to chest on your back. So let me just show that before we do the other side in case you've got knee issues. You can always do half happy baby instead, okay? So this time we're going to do right knee, right leg walking through. And just find that place where you can stay. Soften and be still. And breathe. Relax your shoulders. And you can always check in with your edge. If it's too much, you can back off. You don't have to stay here if it's getting too intense. You can just back off a bit. Okay, and then we're gonna slowly come out and sit back on our heels while this boat goes by. And then we're going to set up our next uh, prop system. But actually, I'm going to show you the modification first because it's half recline heroes or half saddle, depending on whether you're going to use the yin name or the hatha name. And for some people, it's too much for their knees. So let me give you an option for that. If you'd rather, you can take this one lying on your stomach, fold your one leg in and hold on to your foot or your ankle, or you can even use a strap. Here, like wrap the strap around your ankle or your foot and hold on that way. Okay, so that's the option there if you have knee issues. And otherwise, it's good to prop here. Put a high block and a low block, or you can even put your bolster against the wall if you need it to be higher, or your couch is a good spot too. And since we just stimulated the left spleen meridian, this time we'll bend the right knee. You either sit down on your heel, extend your left leg, or inside it. And everybody's body is different, so you'll know what works for you here. And then you're going to lie back on your 
bolster set up. And it's nice if you hold on to the back of your foot too. It creates a seal, a mudra. This pose is just, I find it so calming and down-regulating, so we're just gonna have silence in it and allow it to work its magic. Okay, so we're gonna slowly come out of this pose. Now the way you need to come out of it, it's important for the safety of your knee. So you're gonna tuck your chin, draw your ribs down, and you're gonna come all the way forward. And then you're gonna take your legs out. And we'll just rest back here. You can rest back on your 
props and feel the flow of chi. And then we're going to do the other side. So you're going to come up again. And again, it's going to be unique to each of your own skeletal structures. So you're going to extend your right leg. You may sit on your left heel or inside of it, or you may lie on your stomach and pull your heel towards your buttocks. So whatever works best for you. And again, we're just going to rest back, hold on to our left foot this time, and let the shape work its magic at down-regulating our nervous system here.
Okay, so we're going to slowly come out of this pose now. Just notice how you're feeling as this class goes on too. How the simulating the spleen meridian is affecting you. And your um, emotions, your mental state, your mental body. And we'll just take our legs out in front of us. You can rest back over your bolsters. Okay, and then we're going to come back into dragon pose and I want you to choose an edge in dragon pose so that it doesn't make you dread the fact that we're coming back into it because it's possible so that's that's that part of choosing the appropriate edge and being soft in the pose and you can also choose half happy baby here I mean basically I'm doing dragon again because I can't stand half happy baby <laughs> Okay, we'll start by walking our left leg through. Even out your hips. And choose that soft edge that you can stay with for a while. Maybe even notice how it feels different this time. So if it's feeling too much, you're gonna just relax your shoulders, relax your jaw, back off a bit. So this high, high sensitivity is rooted in our physiology. It's an actual real thing. It's not just a new age label. The 20% of the population that are found to be highly sensitive occurs across 100 species besides humans, including monkeys, fruit flies, pumpkin seed sunfish. They all have the genes that uh, highly sensitive people have. And there are 10 of 78 dopamine genes that are specific to those who are highly sensitive out of the hundreds of genes that govern personality. This, they're the same uh, things that, the same genes that determine whether your eyes are blue or green or brown are, the, are these uh, genes that determine the, the degree of, of, that determine this, these dopamine genes that determine this high sensitivity. Tim just says he feels for the people that live with them, but oh, we're done on this side. But the thing is, it's not like, <laughs> but in our house, actually, all of us are highly sensitive, so <laughs> I don't know. Okay, let's go ahead and do the other side. Walk your right leg through, lean in. So I think the thing that 
I've learned over my almost half century on this planet is that human beings are incredibly adaptable. So Tim was saying one of the ways that we've adapted in our home is that there's we actually don't have a TV, but you know, in some homes, the TV's kind of always on for background noise. And we don't also, we never have any music going. Uh, one time our daughter went with another family on a ski trip and we never had the radio on in the car. So she was just, she was exhausted when she came home because the radio was on all the way on the drive to the ski trip and all the way home on the ski trip and she just, it was just out of her realm of experience for that to happen because that's just one of the ways that we cut down on the sensory input that's coming in for us <laughs> as, high, as highly sensitive people. So that's what I mean when I say we're adaptable. Yeah. Oh, and the other thing is when we're, it's not that we don't take in media because we do, we're all actually quite heavy consumers of media, but we all, whatever somebody else puts something on for themselves and it's, they don't have their earbuds plugged in, then it's like, wear your headphones, put your headphones on. <laughs> Very low tolerance for noise in our, in our household. Okay, and then that's it for this side. And you can put your blocks off to your si off to the side. I think we're done with the blocks now. And just give that a moment to settle. And then we're going to come into our twist now. So you'll want to have your bolster on the that's going to be your right side of your mat, but it's your left side right now. Okay, your arms are out in a soft T. You're going to bend your left leg, press into your left foot, tuck your right hip under. You take your left leg out in a straight line, and then you can either stay here or you can bend your right leg and hold onto your right foot. Just start that timer. So highly sensitive people process everything more. They relate and compare what they notice with their past experience, with other similar things that they've experienced. And a highly sensitive person may feel slower than others because they think over all the possibilities so carefully. I know that's true for me, I always feel like I'm getting through things much more slowly and it's probably true I am going through things much more slowly um, processing so much information can allow the highly sensitive person to see the big picture and connect them with all the possibilities and kind of the whole web of life but it can also be exhausting 
So sometimes it can feel as though the highly sensitive person is completely drowning in information overload and it can take a, a, a long time to process all that information. So keep breathing. Let there be space between your teeth. Let your tongue float in your mouth and allow your body to be soft. going to go ahead and let this pose out of your body press into your left foot untuck your hips and rest back on your back here just allow your body to unwind unravel Okay, you're going to take your bolster over to your other side of your mat now. And you're going to take your arms out into a soft T, bend your right leg, press into your right foot, tuck your left hip under, take your right leg out long on the bolster. And then you're going to either keep your left leg long or bend your left leg and hold on to your left foot.
So the depth of processing means that the highly sensitive people look for deeper meaning in everything, in everything that they do. So this ability to reflect long and deep means that they, they rarely take anything at face value. It also means that they search for meaningful work. So maybe financial sustainability is not like the first criteria for their job description for them. So not just financial support, but also they want work that's person, personally meaningful. So their careers all often look different than people who are not highly sensitive because their work needs to be it needs to be fulfilling for them and sustainable for them mentally and emotionally and but not only that like if you put a highly sensitive person in uh, an office place it would just be physically exhausting for them and mentally exhausting for them and energetically exhausting for them and uh, also it needs to be probably meaningful for them uh, on a spiritual level as well. So I found that even in my non-traditional work, that my day has to look quite different than what I think other people's work days look like. That, you know, I can only work in short bursts and I have to take many breaks throughout the day. And, and I think learning about highly sensitive people, that this is just because of the way that I process, that I'm taking in so much and taking it in so deeply that I have to build in a lot of breaks in my day to be able to not be so mentally exhausted from th the way that I that I function. So this has just been something that I've really come to understand only recently. Okay, so you're going to release this side from your body. You're going to take that bolster once you untuck your hips by pressing into your feet and place it underneath your knees and come into your final resting pose, Shavasana, to allow this whole class to integrate into your body, but also to allow that information, if it's new to you, to settle into your mind as well.
Okay, so you're going to stay resting back to continue to allow your practice to integrate mentally, emotionally, physically, energetically, and spiritually. And I'm going to sit up and read you a poem. So this poem is by Ada Lemon, and it's called We Are Surprised. And for me, it encapsulated the highly sensitive person's experience. But I just want to say that each person who is highly sensitive has a unique experience. It's not like every highly sensitive person has the same experience. So each person has a different experience of what the world is for them. Tim wants me to open my eyes while I'm looking directly into the sun, <laughs> which is possible to me because I'm very sensitive towards light. <laughs> so I will be squinting now. <laughs> now we take the moon into the middle of our brains so we can look like roadside stray cats with bright flashlight white eyes in our faces, but no real ideas of when or where to run. We linger on the field's green edge and say, Someday, son, none of this will be yours. Miracles are all around. We're not so much homeless as we are home-free, penny-poor, but plenty lucky for love and leaves that keep breaking the fall. Here it is, the new way of living with the world, inside of us so we cannot lose it and we cannot be lost. You and me are us and them and it and sky. It's hard to believe we didn't know that before. It's hard to believe we were so hollowed out, so drained, only so we could shine a little harder when the light finally came. And before you come out of Shavasana, I want to acknowledge the depth of experience and feeling that you bring to the world as a highly sensitive person. The research shows that highly sensitive people appreciate everything more. And not just everything, but especially the positive things. So you appreciate the clouds in the sky, the way your beloved smiles. Your high sensitivity allows you to appreciate the small things in the world and to share those things with others. So I just want to thank you for bringing that appreciation and love of beauty to our world. And we'll be talking about that more in future classes. So gradually wiggle your fingers and toes Start to stretch out. And if you want a longer Shavasana, I'll put a card up here so you can take a longer Shavasana. I've chosen one that would be really good for highly sensitive people. Make your, bend your knees, roll it to your side and make your way up to seated if you're not going to take a longer Shavasana right now. You're going to have your left palm up and your right palm down. We'll gather the fruits of our practice into ourselves and then offer them out into the world. Loka samasta sukino bhavantu Loka samasta sukino bhavantu. Loka samasta sukino bhavantu. May all beings be happy and free, and may the thoughts, words, and actions of my own life contribute in some way to the happiness and freedom for all. So give yourself a thumbs up for taking the time out 
to do this class to help to uh, restore your energy and to downregulate your nervous system. And if you know somebody who is highly sensitive, then please share this video with them and put I find beauty in the world in the comments. I want to thank Leah for your donation. Thank you so much for supporting this. And also just to let you know that uh, you know, we're doing courses and I'm supporting highly sensitive people all the time in our membership community. And that's how, um, that's the main way that we're supported and being able to do this work all the time and making sure that I don't have to go out and have a job that would most likely be the end of me. <laughs> so I'm sending you much love from beautiful British Columbia. May your joy be as deep as the Pacific Ocean. May you be as rooted as the old growth trees in the forest. And may you be as strong as our mountains. Om Shanti. Namaste.